Well, welcome to Preston Table Tennis Club. Um, and this is a, a next stage of our table tennis um, the development of what we've been talking about on YouTube so far. We're going to talk about tonight is thought processes about serving. I must stress that we're not looking at this stage of the technical aspect of serving. How to serve? No. The, the actual technical part, whether your body moves, your shoulder moves, your wrist moves or anything like that, no. What we're talking about in this introduction is nine points that we think that you should be thinking about before you serve a ball. Not nine points before you play the game, nine points before you serve every ball. You should be fully aware of what you're trying to achieve and I hope that through going to the next ten, ten technical points of what your thought process should be, you should gain some advantage into what you're trying to achieve when you actually play the game of table tennis. And let's have a look at them. Number one, for a start off, we need to be sure that what we're going to deliver is, is what we want to serve. Do we want to serve with the forehand or do we want to serve with the backhand? The reasons why I say that, because if you decide to serve with your forehand, you'll approach and adopt a different stance position on your control of the table than you would if you're going to serve a backhand. So you need to be clear in your mind what you're going to serve. We have now elected to serve, let's say, a forehand serve. And I have now elected to serve with backspin. I could elect to serve with backspin. I could elect to serve with topspin. I could elect to serve with little or no spin at all. That obviously could decide on what type of rubbers I use. If I use reverse rubber, which I do, little or no spin will be termed as the float. If my opponent, as I have today, Clive, has got short pimples on his forehand, he can elect to play a little bit less spin without actually trying to play a float or less spin because the rotation of the ball of short pimples is not as severe as it does off reverse rubber. So we know what type of rubber we play with and we know what type of serve we're going to impart. So we've got back spin, we've got top spin, or we've got very little spin at all. Okay, so if we go back to the technical points that we're talking about, the 10, the first one we said is what we've got to decide, the first of all, is what we're going to serve with. Are we going to serve a forehand serve or are we going to serve a backhand serve? And the reason why you need to decide that is because that controls where you stand to deliver the serve to wherever you're going to decide in a little while to. So if I'm going to serve with my forehand, I wouldn't want to be standing in the middle of the table with my back covering three quarters of the table and three quarters of the table with my backhand side wide open before I've even delivered the serve. And the reason why I wouldn't do that is because if I don't get my placement absolutely spot on to my opponent, I leave my opponent in with an absolute free ball down my backhand side. And I've got very little time to move into position, get my bat in position, get my stance right, get my posture right, to play a control or attacking ball to a ball that's coming away from me. And that's where I would be if I was stood there. If there's a purpose to that, and you're going to use top spin, side spin viciously, and you're going to take the ball away from your opponent's forehand, meeting the table with the halfway between the net and the forehand corner, then there's a good chance that that could be a very good serve. But you would only do that if you've got points in the bag and you're well up in the game. It's a very risky process to do. Because one, you've got to hope you get your serve accurately and fast to drag the person across. You two, you've got to hope that he's struggling when he gets to the ball. And three, you hope that he doesn't come fast down your backhand side because you've got even further now to get back and get in position to control that ball. So there's no need to consider that option. There's nothing wrong with standing exactly the same way, bringing yourself back across the table and delivering the serve one from near the center white line of the table and that would detect where you're going to serve it to or you could even come further down your backhand side, still adopt in the same stance and deliver the ball from a quarter table backhand and it now gives you more variations and options as to where you can serve it to. Where you serve it from to can actually determine roughly what the opponent returns it with not how, but with, back and the forehand, and roughly to a part of the table that you would like it to come back to. Not always, but you've got a very good chance of achieving that. So that concludes our forehand talk. When we talk about whether we're going to serve forehand or backhand, I said we need to look at the position where we're standing in relation to the two different serves. So we're now going to adopt a backhand position and a backhand stance to serve a backhand backspin ball.
Where we're going to stand from this? Two options. And the reason why I say two options, because there are two positions where you can consider putting the ball to. One thing you wouldn't consider if you're playing a reasonably competent player, you wouldn't consider playing the ball wide from your backhand directly, diagonally across the table, wide of the table. You would do that if you wanted to adopt that as a, as a tactic, knowing full well that that player always comes back to you or to a point that he always does. And you pre-program mentally to, for him to do that. But ideally, if you're going to serve with a backhand serve from your backhand side, you should be face, placing the ball within the body width of the opponent that's receiving that ball. Because this is absolute key to what I want to achieve in this serve.